everyone i am ashutosh today in this video we are going to see how to create event rules as you guys know event rules are necessary to process the raw event and convert it into a notable event and notable event is nothing but an alert in event rule there are few things which are really important like the event filter transpose and compose section uh, the threshold section and the ci binding i am going to explain all these four five sections in detail in this particular video to test this particular sections or this particular components of the event rules i am going to also use um, postpun okay so let's get started for the testing or or to show you some use cases i have created a few event rules you can see my demo 1 till my demo 4 before i start uh, i need to explain you couple of things like for example order so order of the event is really important it will signify which event we need to uh, apply or which event rule should apply to that particular event okay in our organizations we can have multiple uh, event rules for the same source and thus the order is really important now once the let's say let's assume there are two uh event rules like you can see my demo and my demo 4 with the same order and with the same source what will happen so what service now will do is first it will go into my demo okay and then it will try to evaluate the filter condition which i will show you in a while okay and if the filter condition matches then this rule will be applied and no other rule will be processed but if that filter condition does not match it will hop on to the next event rule which for that particular source and it can be order 100 or it can be order 200 or 300 okay and then it will try to evaluate the filter again and if the filter matches proceed uh, with the creation of alert and if it does not matches just ignore it in this particular event rule what i did is let me open it into a designer meanwhile i will open this as well just to show you the difference okay open in view designer okay so here you can see the source is testing order is 100 filter is description matches this regular expression yeah in filter conditions we can write regular expressions we can even write patterns you can create multiple criteria and or conditions you can say okay resource is postman or maybe resource is plunk whatever you want okay so this is one uh, event rule the second event rule with the same source in the same order i have given different condition just to show you guys so resource is plunk for example now what i will do is i will quickly create a uh, few events you can see right now there are no events here i will just hop on to my postman i am going to send this event and create so here you can see uh, there is an event which is in ready state it will be processed by the schedule job and it will create alert so now the alert is created I am going to open this particular event and here you can see which event rule is applied okay and the event rule is my demo because as I told you it will go into this particular event rule and it will try to evaluate the filter condition and the filter condition was description matches this regular expression and this regular expression says that if description starts with v then go and proceed with this particular sections and create a lot out of it and here you can see the description indeed starts with v second now i have created another rest call where and with another body where the description does not starts with v and we'll see which event rule will be applied so trigger event is created let's go and see the event here you can see it is processed processed sorry and if i open this you can see the event rule applied was my demo 4 and my demo 4 was this where the resource is plunk yeah so what happened is it went into this 
first it saw okay the order is 100 the source is testing but the event filter does not matches okay then skip this particular event rule and hop on to another event rule so it went into this and it evaluated the filter condition it in it matched and it created an alert out of it okay now here you can see it's the same alert because the node use was same the message key is same so the combination happened and there is no other alert created but the same alert is created let's move on to another other section where we will talk about how the fields are populated on the alert this is the section where you compose the alert where you build the alert basically okay it's very simple just drag and drop like this okay but the most interesting part is let's say you don't have a node field coming from your particular source and the node field is populated in description instead of the node field in this particular section you can write a regular expression to fetch that particular node from the description field and map with this particular node uh, field okay and then this node field will be used in consecutive sections like in ci binding to resolve the ci and to map this node with the ci field on the alert let's see uh, how it works so what i did is i created another uh, simple event rule where it says that uh, the source is testing too. I'm, uh, let me open it also in the designer. Meanwhile, I'm going to close the other things. Great. Here you can see the source is testing two. Order is 100. The filter is simple, same as resources plunk. And here it's magic. So here you can see I have created a regular expression. So how I did it, click on description, select this like this. Um, maybe let me reset this for you guys. So it's like this, node, done. Once you click on done, it will appear in this expression section. What you need to do is you just need to remove this, pull it from here and drop it here, simple. So what will happen is here also you can see the regular expression did the trick and it only got this particular uh, node name and it is now going to get resolved uh, with the CI name while we do the binding. Okay, next thing which I need to talk about uh, transform is the manual attributes. So you can add your own manual attributes like for example, let's say uh, event um, name. Okay, and I will say my demo. Okay. So what will happen is on event, oh sorry, on alert, under the additional information field, there will be a JSON structure where you will get a key value pair and the key value pair will be event name and with this value, colon this value. If I don't want this, what I can do is I can say, okay, I want, I want resource to be mapped with event name. So let's do this, save. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this uh works when there is an actual event so what i am going to do again i am going to go to my postman i created an example uh, json where you can see out of space uh, with the node name i am going to just send this once i send it you can see there is an event now as the source is different we can see that there will be a different alert created for this so this is an uh, alert 71 instead of 70 because the source is different. There can be uh, cases where different source can have or, or can be monitor can monitor the same node, right? But um, when I will in my next videos when I will talk about the alert management and the correlation and the grouping, I will explain the significance. Okay, let's open this just to show you guys uh, which event rule was applied. So here you can so see my demo 2 and my demo 2 is nothing but which I showed you this is my demo 2 now I'm going to open this alert so that you can see that the mapping was done properly that you see this so here the configuration item field is properly filled in with the node value which we fetched from the description and if we go here uh, the manual attribute as I told you there will be a key value pair generated so this is how it gets generated okay 
this was an example, but in just one example, in some cases there can be an example uh, where you get an IP address in description, you get an IP address in additional information, and that has to be used to resolve the CI on the alert. Yes, that is also possible. Let's move on to another uh, component that is threshold. And to describe this in detail, what I did is I created uh, another rule. Now, why threshold is important? Because let's say to reduce the noise, threshold is very important. Um, one example can be, let's say for a particular node, if you see consecutive uh, events coming into your system, then only create an alert. So just an example, like if you see um, three or four events coming for the same node within two minutes of time frame, then only create an alert. That can be one example. Second example for the threshold can be uh, if your CPU utilization is about 90%, uh, and if the occurrence of the same event above the 90% is multiple times, like three times, four times within two minutes, you can create the alert out of it. Then in the threshold, uh, there is also a significance where we can use the regular expressions. Now, in this particular example, what I did is you can see in the transpose and compose section, I'm creating a virtual variable called as disk underscore uses. What is happening here is I am just trying to extract this 90 from the description, same as what we did to resolve the node name in the previous example. So same, click here, select 90, this. Go to threshold and use the disk underscore usage virtual variable into the field name. Now here you can see I have created a threshold like create an alert only if the disk usage is 90% and the occurrence is one time within two minutes. This one time is just for testing. You can you can change it, of course, to three, four, five, or 100. It's up to you. The most interesting part is close alert operator. Here you can say none, okay? Or you can say idle, 20 seconds. So if the alert is created out of this particular event tool and in next two minutes, you see no event occurring for this particular alert, you can close the alert, okay? Uh, this can be a vague example, you need to test it. I'm going to show you how this particular thing works, okay? How this particular rule gets applied. For that purpose, again, I will go to my postman. I created a sample uh, JSON, send. Let's jump back to the events. You can see now, again, it is a different source, okay? so. We expect that, okay, definitely it is going to create an, another alert. So it has created alert number 79. Node was populated. So the CI binding will happen from node to node, not same like this case. I'm going to open this. Once I open this, you can see all the processing nodes. The CI was binded with another by processing the event rule as my demo three. And my demo three was nothing but this, which I showed you. Great. So the next and the most important section is the CI binding. How the CI gets resolved from event to the alert. Here you can see all the processing nodes like binding alert CI process flow. Node will be resolved to CI ID and this is the sys ID of that particular CI. But how and where it happens? Yes, it happens in the CI binding section. By default, when you do the CI binding, it uses hardware table and four important attributes of that table. First is name of the CI. Second, FQDN name of the CI, fully qualified domain name of the CI. Third, it will be IP address of the CI. If it is a Windows server, Linux server, or other servers, yeah, and if you get the IP address in the description, you can fetch it and then automatically this binding will happen. And the last one is the MAC address, okay? Now, if you want to bind the alert to the application instead of the hardware component, you need to override this and create the binding rule. Okay, the binding rule at a CI identification level and at a class level, for example, MS SQL database. Okay, 
you can select the identifiers these are the uh, identifier rules and these identifier rules can be like serial number is something yeah if the serial number is in your disk uses for example um, just an example but virtual example then at this particular instance so database is always related to a sql instance so for that sql instance also we have identifiers let's say the identifier is the instance name and the class name yeah fantastic so the instance name can be in node yeah and then this is nothing but uh, for overriding the default hardware rule so here you can override the default hardware rule like windows server windows server name is and the name can be fetched from either description or from the node or from uh, the additional information field okay i have many use cases for ci binding which i'm going to discuss in detail in my next video and in my next article okay so keep watching keep following if you have any questions any impediments in this video if you think i can improve please give your suggestions please give your opinions please comment uh, and i will try to solve them as quickly as possible last but not the least this video will be available on my youtube channel this is my youtube channel to subscribe keep following and keep suggesting thank you so much have a nice day